Our next guest represents a unique endeavor to advance the understanding of technology and its many applications. In this case, he's a research strategist with Autodesk. His name, Brian Penne, right? Yes. Hey, Brian, welcome into tomorrow. Hi, thank you. You brought some pretty cool things. First of all, tell me about your mixed reality interface. I, I like what it sounds like. I have just no idea what it is. <laughs> well, sure. Uh, so this originally started out uh, at the TED conference uh, earlier in Feb February, which is the Technology, Entertainment, and uh, Design Conference. Uh -huh. We uh, did some partnership with uh, The Living Homes, which uh, is a sustainable uh, modular housing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we created a interface to allow customers that don't necessarily have uh, expertise with 3D software to easily navigate the 3D space and try different configurations, different paint, different floorings in the house, all immersed in a three-dimensional environment uh, that was done on the computer. Now, this is something that is also being shown here in the Autodesk Gallery that is very cool. Tell me about this item that almost looks like a, a, a film camera. I'm going to hold it up so, so Chris can take a shot of it here. It almost looks like a film camera in a sense, but you move through a house, and it's actually as if you were there walking upstairs, moving around, and that sort of thing. How does that all work? Well, it actually works on uh, rather uh, older sets of technology called computer vision. If you flip the camera over on the bottom there, you'll see a little marker. Ah. And so what's happening is the table actually has a camera and a projection uh, unit underneath. And this is from technology from our partners, Commerce, uh, mm -hmm. that developed the hardware. The camera sees that uh, pattern, and then it uses that as a proxy to some of the UI elements of the uh, software. So in this case, the camera inside of the software is mapped to that camera. That's very cool. So yeah. it knows where it's traveling based on that information. That's correct. That's uh, correct. Now, what about these odd-looking items that, again, for those of you listening on the radio, have no fear. Swing by the website when you can and check out all the video of the items that we're showing. We have video of all the interviews here from Autodesk Gallery. How do you describe what I'm holding up now to the camera? So these are uh, what is known as uh, fiducial markers, but they're essentially markers that allow a camera, a web camera in this case, uh, standard off-the-shelf consumer hardware. That's some of the other things we're focusing on, is enabling consumer hardware to interact and work uh, new and interesting ways with our software. So the uh, camera, the, the web camera, sees this uh, marker pattern, and it uh, then detects that shape and allows to overlay a virtual object on top of that pattern. So at AU, at Autodesk University last year, uh, we showed some of this technology on the main stage with the cube where uh, Jeff was able to, Jeff Kowalski, our CTO, was able to pull a motorcycle uh, into uh, the, the real world scene using one of these cubes. Very cool. Now, what would so. you determine to be the most appropriate application uh, in everyday life for maybe us as consumers at some point to be able to do things like this? Well, I think right now we're starting at just sort of the, the, the simple ways of navigating the 3D scene, so how you would orbit, pan, and zoom. Uh, but then we're extending that to sort of new uh, interaction models, like, for instance, I mentioned with the mixed reality table where you can change different elements of the scene. So mm -hmm. I could change the paint or the, the flooring and whatnot. But we're also looking at this for design, uh, new ways of uh, implementing these types of devices for designers to. And how does that differ from the augmented reality that you talk about? Uh, well, they're, they're, they're similar in the sense that they both leveraged uh, computer vision technology, but they're different in the way that the, the form factor is, the way that, that, that you use them. Um, so with the cube, for instance, just by putting this cube in front of a camera, I can move the cube, and this would move a virtual 3D object in the software. Oh, so in this sense, for example, if it was a motorcycle that you mentioned earlier, you're turning it upside down, or you're looking at the other side, or you're exactly. checking out the wheel, or whatever, based on how you're holding that cube. Yes, exactly. Very cool. And of course, we'll do our best to show you some video of that as well. Now I've committed Chris to having to make sure and shoot that, but it's right around the corner behind me here at Autodesk. We could do some neat things. Now, what about some of these other cool things? No doubt that are printed on the 3D printer here. Uh, in this case, I'm holding a big spring, or it looks like a, a strut or something. <laughs> what is this? So this is a, a technology that's been around that we're starting to look at, which is called rapid prototyping. It's really taking a digital model and uh, printing it in three dimension, where the part actually comes out fully assembled in this case. Uh, and in this case, even the spring uh, works The spring know, is functional. springy. Yes, <laughs> yes. Go figure. <laughs> So being able to print things, this is ABS plastic, but also printing things in different materials, like the sole of the shoe that you see here, um, or even in full color uh, for different devices. Um, so this really helps people better understand how their design will uh, be once it's 
actually fabricated. Yeah, this other item we're looking at here now is a, is a life pack, a, a medical device, but the whole thing is printed not only in 3D, I mean, it's got raised buttons, uh, but you can see like, you know, heart monitoring information and breathing and that sort of thing. But to give, I guess, a, a manufacturer a whole lot better concept of what the final product would be, and it's a lot better than just an artist rendering or something, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Th this is very cool. you got to have a lot of fun in what you do. I, I love my job. I absolutely love it. <laughs> I'll yeah. bet. I mean, it's not too many of us that can live in mixed and or augmented reality. We have to just live in reality, and, and I'd love to be doing what you do on a more regular basis. That's cool. Thanks. Thanks. And, of course, if you want to learn more, you can visit autodesk.com slash research for more about what Brian and his team are up to. Thanks for spending a couple of minutes with us. No doubt we can cover lots more. Maybe we'll do next year's TED conference and have you on more to talk about the kinds of things that you guys are showing if you're involved then. That'd be great. Let's make sure we talk about that. Cool stuff Thank from you. Autodesk. Do check it out. We're back with more as Into Tomorrow continues. I'm Dave Graveline. This is the Advanced Media Network.